In this video, I want to discuss how California's Proposition 19 could affect your property taxes for the good or the not so good when buying, selling, or inheriting property in California. Philip Ma here with eXp Realty. And because this is a tax related topic, I have to start with a disclaimer. The tax information in this presentation is not intended as legal or tax advice. I'm providing it based on my own general knowledge of federal and California tax law. You should always check with your tax professional on potential tax benefits that may apply to you. I'm a real estate agent, an investor, not a tax professional. Now there's two main scenarios where Proposition 19 comes into play. The first is for replacement property. Let's say a husband and wife bought a house many years ago in California, and now they want to sell that house and move somewhere else within California. And in this scenario, the husband is over age 55. Now let's get into the numbers. The husband and wife bought their principal residence in San Mateo County in 1990 for $200,000. Property taxes over all these years since 1990 have been based on an assessed value of around $200,000. That's under Proposition 13, which has been in place for several decades. However, the, the market value has increased tenfold to $2 million. So even though the market value of their house is at $2 million, they're still paying property taxes at that low $200,000 assessed value. Now, in 2022, they want to sell their house for $2 million, the current market value, and let's just say they want to buy a beach house in San Diego at, in the, within the next year, so in 2023, and they're going to pay approximately $2.8 million for that house. So it will be a higher price than what they're selling their home for. Under Proposition 19, the husband and wife are able to transfer that $200,000 assessed value to the replacement property. And we'll get into the rules in a second here, but that's because the purchase was within two years of the sale of their original home. They're able to transfer that up to that market value of $2 million that they sold the home at. What happens to that additional 800 k that they are spending on the new replacement property, well, that 800 k does get reassessed on the new property. So the new assessed value is going to be the original assessed value of 200 k plus the additional 800 k which comes to a million dollars of assessed value. However, that compares to $2.8 million of assessed value if they didn't qualify under Proposition 19. If, let's say, they were under age 55, then they would have to be uh, having a new assessed value of $2.8 million of property taxes on this new property. So you can see that there's a huge benefit here provided by Proposition 19. And if the replacement property was at 2 million or under, then they would be carrying that original $200,000 assessed value and that's it. There would be no additional assessed value. Pretty nice benefit under Proposition 19 for replacement property. Let's take a look at this chart because it provides a good comparison of what the law was like prior to Proposition 19. This chart was provided by California probate attorney and CPA Paul Horn, and it was part of a certification that course 
that I took that's offered by the California Association of Realtors. Now, this benefit for replacement value, it was available prior to Proposition 19, but before April 1st, 2021, when Proposition 19 came into effect, it was more restrictive. Before and after it applies to a principal residence, it has the, the people have to be age 55 or older or severely, severely disabled. If it's a married couple, only one of those people has to meet those criteria. The timing has to be, you purchase that replacement property or build a new home within two years of the sale of the original property. Here's where there's a big difference. The location of a replacement home. Before Proposition 19, the replacement home had to either be in the same county or within 10 counties that had this inner county ordinance. Now, under Proposition 19, it applies to all counties. You can move anywhere within California. Also, in the prior law, there was a limit on the value of the replacement property. It had to be of equal or lesser value. So in our example, the original property sold for $2 million, but the replacement property was of greater value. In that example, under the old law, you would not be able to carry over that 200K assessed value because the new value, the replacement property, was of greater value. In the new law, you could still carry over the assessed value up to this, uh, the value of the original property, up to $2 million in our example. And it's just the excess value that has to be reassessed. So that's a huge benefit. And finally, under the old law, you could only do a transfer of that assessed value one time. Under Proposition 19, you could do it up to three times. Here's the second scenario where Proposition 19 comes into play. It's for inherited property. Let's say we have a scenario where mom and dad bought their primary home in 1990 for $200,000. Over all these years, their property taxes have been based on the assessed value of around 200 k and that has been held down under Proposition 13. Now, in 2024, the current value is up tenfold to about $2 million. And unfortunately, mom and dad <clears throat> have both passed away. Let's say they have a daughter who inherits the house and the daughter decides to move into the house as her primary residence by the end of 2024. Under Proposition 19, the daughter will get to carry over that original 200,000 assessed value up to a market value of $1.2 million, which is equal to that original 200K of assessed value plus another $1 million of value. Now, beyond $1.2 million, that um, value above $1.2 million does get reassessed. So in this example, the market value is at $2 million. It's exceeding that 1.2 by 800K. So now you have a new assessed value of 200K plus 800K is $1 million. Instead of getting that, being able to carry over that really low assessed value of $200,000. Let's take a look at what the law was like prior to Proposition 19 and the not so good aspects or the limitations that Proposition 19 put into place. Under the old law and the new law, this applies to inherited property, either from a parent 
to a child or from a grandparent to a grandchild. Now, under the old law, this could apply to a primary residence without limit. So in our example, the full $2 million value could be exempt from reassessment. In other words, the daughter would keep her 200K assessed value up to the full market value of $2 million. And then of course, as we saw in the example under Proposition 19, the exemption only was up to the assessed value plus another million. So 1.2 million in our example, the excess of 800,000 had to be reassessed or had to be added to that 200K of assessed value. Another difference between the old law and the new law is that before, if the parents had say rental property that was not their primary residence, the child could get an exemption from reassessment up to $1 million in value. Under Proposition 19, that has completely gone away. And then in terms of timing under the old law, the child had up to three years from inheriting the property to claim this exemption from reassessment. Now under Proposition 19, they only have, it has to be within one year of inheriting the property. So in our example, because the daughter was moving in within that same year of the parents passing away, she will be able to claim that uh, exemption from reassessment. But if it was more than a year, as if more than a year has passed, then she cannot take advantage of it. Now there is a potential planning opportunity to avoid some of these restrictions under Proposition 19 with respect to inherited property. In the training that I took, there was a reference made to this case called Ocean Avenue LLC versus County of Los Angeles, otherwise known as the Michael Dell slash Fairmont case. So if you're interested in looking further into this, you could check with your tax professional and reference that case. As always, reach out to me if you'd like a free consultation on buying or selling a home in Silicon Valley. I also have free sellers and buyers guides for spring of 2024 as well as market update slides and these Prop 19 slides in the Google Drive folder at the URL that you see on the left as well as in the description below this video. I do ask for your email address and that's just so I can keep you informed on what's going on in the Silicon Valley marketplace. You're free to unsubscribe at any time. I'm Philip Ma with eXp Realty, and I look forward to talking with you very soon.